I watched this episode with a friend, and before it started, I said to him, I don't want to do this. I don't want to watch this episode. Since episode 3 kind of killed the lore for me and I just kind of gave up on the show, I've started to just kind of have fun making fun of how absolutely ridiculously idiotic the show has become. But I just couldn't enjoy myself when I was watching this. Watching this episode is akin to watching somebody kick a puppy. It's just not enjoyable. I don't want to do it. But I did, and I'm glad it's over. So the episode starts off with Tyrion and Jon walking through the ruins of King's Landing. Jon comes across Grey Worm, who's executing some stray Lannister soldiers. And Jon tries to stop him. And for some reason, these soldiers aren't begging. Like normal fucking people would. I mean, I would. Of course, if I was in this show, maybe I'd be begging to die. Get this fucking shit over with. So why does everything look so fake while Tyrion's walking through the ruins of the Red Keep? Did the fucking visual artists, did they just give up? I would. And it looked like basically the entire Red Keep collapsed. Certainly the entire, like, the crypts or the, the basement of the Red Keep was all collapsed. But, you know, now there's just some piles of fucking rubble and Tyrion's able to just go and find Cersei and Jaime's corpses. Because that's a thing that's likely. <laughs> So how did Grey Worm make it here before John? Wasn't John going to find Danny before Grey Worm finished executing those soldiers? Yeah. <laughs> oh, they're so fucking poetic. Jesus Christ. John should just behead her right now. John is right behind her. There's no way that John can fucking justify this. This what she did is unfucking justifiable. Valar, Rinyar, Tole Gregovotis, Grivi in Noma Pregelat. For you to take that break the wheel speech and trample all over it, fuck you, D and D. Fuck you. Rapa Tolvio Vio Ninon Diraderat. Tolvio Pregelat. This is a cartoon. I'm watching a cartoon. Daenerys is a Disney villain. Look at the way she's dressed for Pete's sake. So Tyrion resigns his hand to the Queen, and Daenerys, as any good mad queen would do, arrests him. I chose my fate. The people of King's Landing did not. I can't justify what happened. Yeah, no fucking shit, John. She liberated the people of Slaver's Bay. She liberated the people of King's Landing. But she did liberate the people of Slaver's Bay. She actually liberated them, rather than fucking commit genocide and slaughter them all. What the fuck? My father was an evil man. My sister was an evil woman. Pile up all the bodies of all the people they ever killed. There still won't be half as many as our beautiful queen slaughtered in a single day. She left her no choice. The moment she had no choice. Fuck you! There is no justifying this. John wouldn't. At this point, seeing what John saw, John was on the fucking ground. He saw that the bells were ringing. The Lannisters had sur King's Land. King's Landing had surrendered. He saw what happened, and she slaughtered everyone for no fucking reason other than for the sake of it. So John wouldn't have two qualms about killing her right where she stood at this point. He doesn't need to have a conversation with Tyrion to convince him otherwise. When she murdered the slavers of Astapor, I'm sure no one but the slavers complained. After all, they were evil men. Oh yeah, Daenerys is so evil because she's killed some evil people. Well guess what? Every fucking character in this show has killed some evil people. That doesn't mean they commit fucking genocide. Daenerys, in fact, was one of the better ones. She actually liberated a shitload of fucking slaves. She actually stayed in Marine to rule when she didn't need to. For the good of those ex-slaves. Fuck! I love her too. Not as... successfully as you. Who wrote this dialogue? Oh, wait. Now, Drogon chilling there, uh, covered in snow, doesn't really make any sense, but that CGI is A-fucking-plus. Jon's in harder denial than the fanbase was in Season 7. 
At this point, he's basically begging Daenerys not to go ape shit and destroy all of the other Seven Kingdoms, and Essos for that matter. What the fuck is this conversation? No, God! No, God, please, no! 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 Oh, oh, thank God. Why is she bleeding from her nose? This, this murder is kind of out of character for John. I mean, John, if John was going to kill her, John would flat out tell her he was going to kill her and tell her the reasons why before he killed her. And it's not like he didn't have the opportunity to do so. There's no reason to fucking bring her in like this and fucking stab her in the heart clandestinely. Fuck that shit. Also, apparently Danny has gone completely mad. Not a shred of common sense left in her, otherwise she'd execute Jon Snow rather than embracing him here. Wasn't the Mad King paranoid? Why isn't she surrounded by guards or something? She's just alone, ready to be stabbed. Oh, what a satisfying death. Most satisfying of the show. Good job, writers. So, Drogon spits some flame and melts the Iron Throne. So Drogon's the hero of the show? Fuck yes! I've always been on the dragon's team. So then Drogon pieces out and that's it. We never see him again. Where is he going? Why is he taking Daenerys' corpse? Why didn't he kill Jon? The world may never know. What is happening? What? Who the fuck is this guy? So it turns out what is happening is we have cut to an undefined point in the future where all of the leaders of the Seven Kingdoms are having a meeting to choose who's going to be the next ruler, I guess. Okay, I don't see a scenario where this meeting can possibly take place. If the Unsullied discovered that Jon had killed Daenerys, they would have just fucking executed him. They would not have waited. Especially Grey Worm. I mean, he, he is dedicated to Daenerys no matter what. So, they would have fucking executed him. So there's no chance that, you know, the Northern Armies would have time to surround King's Landing. There's no, there's no way. They would have just killed, they would have just killed Jon a long time ago. And they would have killed Tyrion a long time ago. But the fucking writers want Jon and Tyrion to live, so fuck. Don't even get me started on why the hell these characters are here. Okay, fine. Prince of Dorne? Yeah, that's a kingdom. Queen of the Iron Islands? Yeah, that's a kingdom. I guess this guy is from the Westerlands? I don't know who the guy beside Gendry is. Is he from the Reach? I don't know. Gendry, okay, as stupid as it was to make him Lord of the Stormlands, he's Lord of the Stormlands, that's a kingdom. Why the fuck is Davos here? Is he representing Jon? Then why are Sansa and Bran and all them there? Why the fuck is Brienne here? It doesn't look like she's representing Sansa. And Tarth isn't a fucking kingdom. So what the fuck? The Veil vale guys are here, Robin Aaron's here, fine, fine. Who's the guy sitting beside Sam, and why is Sam here? I get that he's a Tarly, and he's a powerful house, but these aren't all of the houses. There's like hundreds of houses. So who the fuck are these people? I think the writers legitimately have no clue about the world of their story. They couldn't even get Gendry's bastard name right. I wonder if Sansa has discussed with Brienne how Brienne betrayed her by letting Jaime leave Winterfell. Didn't she swear an oath to protect Sansa's interests? Well, it's not in Sansa's interest to have Jamie fucking Lannister leave Winterfell. And she just let him go, so... Maybe the decision about what's best for everyone should be left to... Well, everyone. I'm going to fucking kill myself. Please, don't fucking de democracy this shit. <laughs> oh, thank God. <laughs> so then they move on to the serious business, you know, the choosing of the new king, and Tyrion gives a speech. There's nothing in the world more powerful than a good story. And who has a better story than Bran the Broken? What? Bran. It's fucking Bran. Of all the possible choices, it's fucking Bran. But... Why? Why would you... Why would you choose Bran? What? There comes a time in all forms of media consumption where you are so utterly bewildered by an event taking place that you just skip it because you can't find any words. And then they take a vote on it and everybody just says I. Most of these fucking people don't know who he is. Why do they support him? What is going on? He's like 15 in show terms. Why does Bran act like all of a sudden he wants this? So, remember when Tyrion was concerned about the line of succession? They're just going to have, quote-unquote, elections 
every time the ruler dies? Yeah, that sounds like it'll work out perfectly and totally won't result in wars every single time the ruler dies. Because there's no line of fucking succession. What is happening? Everyone just says, I! And then, and then Grey Worm just tacitly agrees, Oh, I, I guess Bran is the king now. What? What is happening? Grey Worm doesn't care about Westerosi politics. He doesn't care about any of these fucking people. He was dedicated to Daenerys and only Daenerys. Why is he fine with this? So Sansa demands of Bran independence for the North, and of course he just agrees on the spot. But wait, wasn't Yara insisting on being independent before too? And why wouldn't the Dornish prince push for independence? And holy shit, do they do dirty by Jon Snow. After all the fucking shit he's been through, they just send him back to the fucking wall! The bastards killed him! The Night's Watch killed him! And his watch had finally ended, and they're like, well... Sorry, man. After everything you've done, after the, after the countless times you saved all these fucking people, you're going back, because fuck you. You will father no children. Fuck you, John. How long a time period has passed at this point? I see a whole lot of buildings that didn't seem to be there before. And there seems to be a whole lot of activity in the city again. What the fuck? Like, King's Landing is principally made out of stone. It would take a lot of fucking time to rebuild King's Landing. But it seems like it's mostly back now! Oh, that Barristan Sell Me page should be blank. How fucking long did it take for them to clean all this shit up? Everything looks fine, King's Landing's practically back to normal. Where did they find the fucking Masons to do it? Daenerys killed them all! Okay, how is Sam a Grand Maester? Doesn't that take like 20 years or something? What the fuck is going on? What's this? A song of ice and fire. Fuck. You. This is not a song of ice and fire. This is fucking dumb and dumber had sex and created the this baby called Game of Thrones Season 8 that they actually aborted at six months. And now there's just fucking remains of the baby on the fucking table and Planned Parenthood's gonna sell off their parts pretty soon. Oh yeah, Podrick is totally good enough for the Kingsguard. I mean, he received like a few months of training from Brienne and now he's like fucking A-plus Swordmaster fucking on the Kingsguard. Awesome! I thought episode 5 was fanfiction. Good god, this shit. Holy fucking shit. This plays out, this whole meeting plays out like a fucking parody. This is like an advertisement for Cheerios that they just brought in all the actors to do. What the fuck is going on? What the fuck is this? So the Unsullied are given lands to settle on, and Grey Worm goes back to Noth. But what, what about the Dothraki? I guess they're just raping and pillaging random villages at this point. So John gets sent back to the wall. He has a nice little touching goodbye with Sansa and Arya. It's fine. It's fine. And with Bran, it's fine. Arya's going off to, to west of Westeros. Fine. I don't, in principle, have any problems with this. But they've just murdered her fucking character at this point, And she does nothing. Why is she in King's Landing at all? She doesn't do anything. But anyway, John gets sent back to the wall. Why do they even have a wall at this point? Why do they even have Night's Watch at this point? They made peace with the Wildlings, and didn't John give the Wildlings the gift? You know, like farmable land? Why would they want to go back to frozen fucking tundra? Are there any actual Night's Watch members left? I don't see any, I only see Wildlings. Is John leading them now? That was quick, John's the new fucking Lord Commander again. Are they just going north? Like, why are the Wildlings going back north? And oh my god, did he not deserve this reunion with Ghost? Dude, you did him so fucking dirty! You didn't even give that poor doggo a pat on the fucking head! After everything Ghost has done for you and you just come back... Oh Jesus Christ, fuck you, John! Fuck you! So the Wildlings are going north for no, no fucking reason. I, I, and that's the end. That's how the fuck... That's how the... That's how this episode ends, that's how the season ends, that's the... That's the finale of this episode, that's the finale of the season, and that's the series fucking finale, folks! Are you fucking kidding me?! They just go back north! Okay? I guess this is to symbolize humans retaking back the land they lost or something? But why do they want to go back north? The Night's Watch, under the command of Lord, uh, Jon Snow, gave them the gift, which are land south of the Wall. Why are they going back? For what purpose? What's the point? And why does the Night's Watch even exist? 
What do they have to protect? What do they have to defend against anymore? Are they going to rebuild that section of wall that the Night King took out? The worst thing I can say about this episode in particular was that it was boring. Nothing in particular actually really stirred me. Other than mild building annoyance. There is not a lot of writing that went into this episode. A lot of this episode is just actors staring and not saying anything. You don't say. When this show ended, I felt catharsis. Not satisfaction. But I am so fucking glad this show is over. The writers have ripped to pieces my favorite show on television. The one show where you could never expect what was going to happen, but it always felt satisfying. Where every character was morally ambiguous and interesting. Where no one was safe. Where subversion didn't have to be a dirty word because it was done well. Rest in peace, Game of Thrones. And there's no inside the episode. Ha! There's no, there's no behind the scenes after this episode. The writers can't justify this shit. I'm starting to wonder if maybe there was a behind the scenes and then they just like fucking, they removed it because they didn't want the fan backlash from it. Oh, we just kind of forgot to write a good ending. Fuck you, D&D, for, for destroying the best show on television. Fuck you. I have no sympathy for you. Fuck you. But the best thing about this is I no longer have to watch Dumb and Dumber parrot around the corpse of my favorite show. Not only did Dumb and Dumber kill Game of Thrones, they then proceeded to kill its corpse by having Arya drop in from a teleportation hole to stab it in the gut. Speaking of Arya, what about the green eyes thing? What about Azora High? What about all the other prophecies? Is Lightbringer this fucking dagger? It's over. The Game of Thrones is over. We the fans lost, and it died. Rest in fucking peace. So guys, that concludes my series of Season 8 reviews. I don't intend this channel to become a Game of Thrones channel, but you can expect a somewhat in-depth analysis video of how exactly Game of Thrones went off the rails and how we can prevent this kind of thing from happening again. Uh, in the coming few weeks, I will drop that video, so please subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't miss it. If you like this video, please smash that like button. If you want to support the channel, please visit my Patreon. Technoguy3 out. Are you fucking kidding me?